So I was talking about timing and how to develop it, but I'm going to try to be really short. My approach to solving timing issues is a little bit different. Uh, because what most people say is, okay, focus on playing laid back or focus on playing on the beat. They talk about a feel. But the problem is that it's very difficult to change that just like this. Because you feel the music in a certain way, your technique is tuned in a certain way to play the notes. Now, if somebody tells you, you know what, you're rushing, you should uh, play that back, it's impossible to do that on the spot. Maybe you might be able to do it for like two bars, but you, you can't do it for like a whole set. My approach is to not focus on that, but to focus on the consistency of your swing eighth notes. So that means you take two eighth notes, two eighth notes, like, right? And you make a choice. Okay, do I want to play them straight? Three, four. Or do I want to, do I want to play with a little swing? Let's, let's play a couple of those because otherwise you won't hear it. So let's say I'm gonna play so straight would be like this, three, four. All the notes have equal length. Or am I gonna play it with a little bit of a swing feel? Right, I'm playing long, short, long, short, long, short, or heavily swung. That's usually what I go for, right? I, go, I, I like that heavily swung feel. Now, to improve your timing, you have to focus, forget about the layback stuff, focus only on if that is consistent. So it, are all your long notes in the group of two as long as each other? And are all the short notes as short as other short notes? If you are consistent with that, then you will always sound uh, in control, right? What, what often happens is that somebody plays maybe with heavily swung eighth notes. And then suddenly there's like a couple of straight notes and it sounds just sounds off. So what I hear myself, if I make a timing mistake, then I hear that. I think, okay, so now I'm not swinging anymore, I'm playing straight, or I'm playing uh, the other way around, like instead of long, short, I'm playing short, long, something like that. And that usually happens because of techni technical reasons. So I wanna give an example. Let's say I'm playing this thing. I'm going for heavily swung, so it has to sound like this, three, four. There's a couple of problems. The first problem is the sweeping. There's three notes that are swept, or s that are swept, yeah. It's very easy to, to, play, to rush that to not have the consistent swing timing anymore, because, I mean, this, this motion is just very easy to just let your hand drop. So you have to find a way to make sure that you're still playing da -de -de -de. Right, only this. Long, short, long. And then the second problem, is this slide, for instance. It's very easy to also, because you're not using your picket hand anymore, to just move your hand left hand faster than you would do normally if you want to have a consistent uh, swing feel. Let's say you do a hammer-on. Let's do there. That E is the long note of the two eight notes, the long one. So your hammer-on should be a little bit later and not like this. Pull off the same way. Let's do pull off. That uh, F sharp is the long note. No, it's a short note. All right, so you have to be very aware of what each note is in a group of two notes and what technique you're using. So the way to practice it, the way I practice it with a metronome, that is a two, five, one in G. One, two, three. There was a lot of slides in there, and those slides were not timed consistently. So I would practice that with a metronome. One, two, three. Three. Yeah, that 
first uh, slide was not good. One, two, three. And also recognize that as soon as you have a passage where you can play up and down or like uh, alternate, that's the easy part. So even if you are a little bit off before, that's the point you start correcting yourself. Two, three. Okay, so let's say you're happy with that. So now the theory is that if you are really consistent, it really doesn't matter where the metronome is, right? So now I'm gonna change the metronome around, not uh, to make it more challenging for myself, although it is, but to just check my consistency with those notes. Because if I'm playing consistent, then it doesn't matter where the metronome is. Let's start with the metronome on, on let's, let's do two on four, right? That's, that's really uh, obvious. One, two, three. Now you can challenge yourself and say, okay, I'm gonna just do it on beat four. One, two, three, four, one. Two, three. So that's how you practice timing. And now the thing is, or that's how I practice timing. Now the thing is, it's gonna be different in every tempo. So you gotta do this in different tempos. And what I like to do then is, like once I get that kind of feel going, just play a song. Don't care too much about the notes. I mean, that would be great if you play nice notes, but now care about that feeling. Let, let's take a, It's You or No One. That's just the backing track I just uploaded. It's like 160. It's you or no one. That's a nice tune. If you don't know it, it's a very nice tune. I 
I mean, that felt pretty good. Let's, uh, let's just play a faster song. Sometimes when I hear myself back, it's like, oh, wow, it was not as consistent as I thought it was. Sometimes you have, it's difficult to judge uh, for yourself. It usually happens when you are uh, focusing on other stuff. Let's play something really fast. Let's play China Boy and uh, see what happens. Then I'll talk more about the coordination if I feel something. Right, so it's it's obviously much more difficult to do it at high tempos, and um, also because you got to make decisions on what you uh, what you want to play, right? But it's the same thing. I'm I'm trying to focus on the same thing, like do 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 do. Okay, let's add in some questions.